Greetings humans on the internet. This is your friendly neighborhood. Marijuana guy. And welcome to the third episode of my UFC prospect series, where I analyze an up and coming fighter in the UFC, going over their strengths and weaknesses, and seeing how they match up with the rest of their division. The fighter that I'll be going over today is Muslim Salikov. Muslim Salikov is an immensely experienced and decorated Sanda fighter. Sanda is a modern style of kung fu which basically combines kickboxing and stand-up wrestling with no ground fighting whatsoever. Prior to fighting in the cage, Salikov was busy tearing it up in Sanda and kickboxing, amassing a record of 185 wins and 13 losses. He has either won or placed at every single world championship that he's competed in, and he even holds the distinction of being one of the only two non-Chinese athletes to have won the Wushu Sanda's King's Cup. His immense amount of experience, accolades, and accomplishments in the sport has earned him the moniker, the King of Kung Fu. By the way, I could not find any actual statement from him proving that he is a Muslim. However, he does come from Dagestan, where Islam is essentially a state religion. So we can assume that Muslim Salikov is indeed a Muslim. Moving on, a big part of Sanda is mixing up your strikes with your takedowns. However, Salikov tends to only use his wrestling defensively and prefers to keep the fight standing at all times. Due to his background, he has an amazing grasp of fundamental kickboxing and has even mastered a few unorthodox techniques such as the back kick, spinning hook kick, and spinning back fist. This is aided by his incredible sense of timing, which he's attained over decades of competition and training. His three most devastating strikes are also the cause of the majority of his knockout wins. He normally doesn't set up his right overhand with other strikes, but instead closes the distance for it using feints or exploding into it, relying on his timing and sheer athleticism. The overhand right is also one of his favorite counters and the cause of many of his knockouts. He usually doesn't set up his back kick or spinning hook kick, instead relying on his speed and explosiveness to catch the opponent off guard. He does however use them synergistically, usually by conditioning his opponents into blocking low with a back kick to the body, before eventually moving up to the head to lay them out. This can be seen in his fight against Melvin Gillard, as well as his kickboxing bout against Nurla Mulali. A large aspect of Salikov's game is that he rarely puts together combinations, preferring instead to stay patient, go tit for tat with the opponent, and bide his time until an opportunity presents itself for the knockout blow. This approach might sound counterproductive as having a high output and work rate is the current meta of the welterweight division, however, Salikov still manages to have a moderate output and respectable accuracy which is enhanced by the immense power that he carries in his hands and legs, and evidently this formula has worked so far. Now one strike that Salahov seems to have a very hard time defending against is the overhand right. This is something that has plagued his entire MMA career and Zaleske dos Santos was able to really expose and exploit it in his fight against Salahov. His main reactions to the right overhand is to try to roll with it or counter it, but oftentimes he becomes like a deer in headlights and doesn't really know how to respond to it. Now it could just be due to poor reaction time to that specific strike or his opponents being very good at closing the distance, but I think his footwork may be exacerbating this. He generally stands right in front of his opponent, looking to trade strikes and counter the opponent as they come in on him. His first instinct when the opponent throws a punch is to either counter it head on or move backwards in a straight line. Neither of these actions are ideal if you want to defend the strike, unless you have your shoulder or your guard up on the side of the strike to defend you. But other times, he circles towards the opponent's power side, which shortens the distance of the strike for the opponent, thus making it harder to react to the overhand. Now, as I mentioned before, Salahov tends to only use his wrestling defensively and prefers to keep the fight standing at all times. So far, that strategy has worked. The only fight where his takedown defense didn't hold up was in his fight against Alex Garcia, where he was taken down thrice and eventually submitted in the second round. Since fighting Garcia, he has not faced many grapplers. However, his takedown defense did hold up against all of his next opponents. Now, in the Garcia fight specifically, he showed a good understanding of cage wrestling which is arguably the most important aspect of grappling in MMA, but he did struggle with the chain wrestling of Garcia against the cage. This is a big problem moving forward, as the welterweight division is extremely saturated with high-level wrestlers who specialize in chain wrestling against the cage. 
Personally, I'd like to see Salehov mix up his strikes with his takedowns a lot more. He comes from Dagestan, Russia, which is the breeding ground for the best wrestlers in the world. And if you go back and watch his fights in Sanla, you can see that he used to love taking people down and was great at doing so. I think the main reason why he doesn't do that anymore is because he feels a lot more secure in his striking than in his grappling, especially now that submissions and ground fighting are involved. But it's really a mistake not to do that, as it will add another dimension to his striking by making his opponents wary about the threat of the takedown, which opens up opportunities on the feet. Which brings me to his ground game. This is an aspect of his game that he has only shown glimpses of, which makes it extremely difficult to properly analyze. The only fight where he spent a significant amount of time on the ground was against Alex Garcia, and he really didn't look good in that fight. He was really struggling to retain guard, and at times even looked like he didn't quite know what to do. For example, what he should have done in this position was to use the lockdown to relieve the shoulder pressure, dig for an underhook and angle out his hips to eventually get back to his feet. Of course it's easier said than done against someone as strong as Garcia, but it would have been better to try and go for that instead of laying flat on his back and doing nothing. Now just like Mark Matson, the clock is ticking on Muslim Selikov's career. He's 36 years old and has taken a lot of punishment throughout his combat sports career, not only in competition. On top of that, he's in an extremely slow moving division and he's nowhere close to being ranked yet. I don't really see him matching up very well against the top 15 of his division. So at best, I see him being a solid top 10 contender before inevitably retiring. 